everybody, it's Ryan Harris. I'm here with Bruce Kerb, Snow West Test Rider. This is going to be the 858 Re-Review Pod. As you already know, we have a couple podcasts out there from our last ride on the 858s. Arctic Cat invited media to ride those sleds that we tested uh, on back-to-back media rides. And after we released our podcast, Arctic Cat reached out to us and told us that those sleds that were presented to the media to ride, well, they weren't broken in, they didn't have, uh, they should have had a better setup, didn't have good performance and clutching calibration. So uh, Articat reached out again and invited us back up to ride the updated calibration on their that their mountain engineers and their clutching guys have been working on in the weeks since that previous ride. Uh, they so they've really been busy dialing these in and and building a better base calibration for production, better than what they had on that first ride. We've been testing mountain sleds for decades. This does happen every now and then. It's pretty rare, but this does happen every now and then where the calibration on the initial test fleet is so far off that they've they've got to go back to the drawing board and then have media come back out and try it again. So uh, we're gonna dive into this. We just barely got off the mountain, just rode these things. First, real quickly, let me thank for some of our sponsors. The Snow West Show is brought to you by Polaris Snowmobiles. Visit your local Polaris dealer to snow check your customized Chaos RMK or Pro RMK. Available with the 850, 9R, or Patriot Boost. Get the options and colors you want with up to four year warranty. Snow check ends March 27th, so you got a little bit of time left. And thanks to our friends at 320 Guest Ranch in Big Sky, Montana. Check out the cabins available at 320ranch.com. All right, let's talk 858s. On to the show. But we're going to jump right into this, and uh, I promise we'll keep this short. A little backstory: we we went to uh, a media event uh, and tested the 858s right off the bat. That was uh, the last week of February. We released two podcasts after that, and those sleds were just not uh, not very impressive they didn't meet expectations uh and we kind of reported on what we rode you know we we don't have any control over what's provided to ride or test we don't have any control over the setup that's all done and taken care of by arctic cat come to find out after the fact after that event that arctic cat uh, just barely had received those those units those snowmobiles that we rode that were uh, sent out for that media event and uh they had not really dialed in any clutching any uh fuel mapping calibration the calibration on those sleds was just kind of off we had st- we had issues with steering uh components being over tight and the sleds not wanting to turn and just uh you know some of our comments were lack of throttle response and bottom end related and uh arctic cat reaches out to us says hey we're uh, we're a work in progress on these 858s come back up work with the engineering team Let's go ride these again. We've we've done a lot of work in the last two, three weeks to get these things dialed in and to get them closer to where our actual production spec will be. So uh, Bruce Curbs and I just uh, just really literally just got yeah, off the mountain. We did. Uh, riding these these 2025 858s. God, Bruce, what what's your initial response now? <laughs> well, I mean, people are going to think we're weird here, but uh, all I can say is night and day difference. Um, I mean, after the first few miles and then into the trees, um, it, it, it was a totally different sled. And I give props to the, the guys here up at Arctic Cat for their, uh, you know, their late night hours, I'm sure, and their testing and tuning and their calibrations and all that. Like, props out to them because they definitely uh, woke this sled up. Throttle responses there. We're able to adjust some shocks on the fly up there, which was nice to do. Steering felt great. And that chassis... And the Alpha Rail just works. Um, I mean, you know, it, it's it's definitely night and day difference from the the shoot the snow shoot that we did here a few weeks ago. So very very impressed. I'm I'm happy. Yeah, it's a totally different split, totally different machine, and a totally different ride experience. I mean, this the three sleds that we rode today and focused on today, uh, like like we've said, have several stages of different calibration, engine calibration, and clutching calibration from when we initially rode and tested. So it's not just like, hey, we updated it. Hey, we they've actually updated it and then updated it and then updated uh-huh. it. Spent a lot of time working on these. And I I am honestly surprised. I mean, th- so the 858 to, that we rode today meets the lofty expectations that I had for it. And, and I think that I agree. social media totally. had for it. Like, this thing rips. And the bottom end is there. Throttle response is there. Nothing really lacked. No, like mid mid range, you know, you you often on the throttle at mid range, it just, it, I mean, it wakes right back up. So, I mean, we were in uh, tight trees, long poles up hills, through some ravines, all types of riding today. Snow conditions were 
what do we have, six inches of new, eight inches of new? But uh, Up higher, probably, I think you were into a little over a foot yeah. of new stuff. And on, uh, on top of good snow underneath, like it. And Shay, you know, I, I'm i sure we, we upset some people, and there are probably some unhappy people at Arctic Cat with us. And I know Shay was uh, looking to take us on a on a tough ride, you know, yeah. really show us where the alpha shines and what these things do. And it, it uh, for those of you who don't know, their backyard is our backyard. We kind of ride and test in the exact mm-hmm. same zones and have the same areas going up into there. And, and uh, so it, it, it was a great ride. It was the exact kind of ride that we would go do on our own. Yeah. It's just a, such a different ride experience when everything is working, when the clutching is working, when the engine is working, because then it allows the chassis to do its job as well yeah well and i actually feel more confident on a sled that's working good you know if you got something that's the bottom end bog now you're thinking all right i'm in the tight trees how am i going to maneuver this through certain areas with that bog or the steering or you know even lack of power up up top on some sleds but um when a sled's working my confidence level goes up and i don't you just ride it and have fun yeah quite a bit different than i mean night and day difference than what we initially reported on so I got to figure out what to go do with those other two podcasts because that's, as far as I'm concerned now today after writing this stuff, that's inaccurate information. Yeah. I mean that, you know, we had to do podcasts on what we rode and having a good talk with Shay and Alan up here and, and a couple of the other guys, you know, we were able to, to figure out some stuff on why maybe them sleds didn't run that great, um, you know, a few weeks ago. And it was good because in today's world, you know, you got to be upfront. Sometimes truth hurts, but um, I thought it was a great, a great gesture for them to vi- invite us back up, clear the dirt, clear the air, put us on some sleds that, that ripped today. So it was, it was good. We had a 154, 154. 858 with the three inch track, uh, non electric start. That was kind of the one that we spent most of the time focusing on. We also had a 154, 858 with the two six track. That one was electric start. Yes. You could feel the weight difference there. You know, you're, you're carrying around the weight of the electric uh, starter. You have that steel starter ring gear on the backside of the primary clutch. I could feel a little bit of a difference there between those two sleds. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm definitely not going electric start. Like, it, to me, the, it's not worth the weight penalty. It's not worth the, you know, having the extra rotating mass on that primary clutch. For sure. And, you know, with, with the engine calibration being better, uh, the sleds actually started. First pull. Yeah. It's, for I mean, the that's, majority of the time. Yeah. That's kind of been one of the jokes, right? Uh, um, yeah. From our well, last podcast. Had, I think Taylor Peck today came to really rub that in. Like, Yeah. Yeah, for sure. No, but uh, yeah, the, the the 858 would start on the first pull. Uh, it still is a it's a high compression start, but uh, I, I'm not I'm not taking an electric start. Like that's a penalty on that sled. Yeah, I agree, totally agree. And then we had a we had an 858 146 with the that also has the two six track. The the 146 that thing ripped. So the let, let's point this out too. The 146 and the 154 with the two six track both had the uh, AC5S shocks. Yep. And we were able to spend a little more time playing with those and adjusting those. Uh, and then the, uh, the 154 with the three inch track that was not electric start, that, uh, that was the Alpha One model, the black one. Yeah. With the uh, IFP shocks, the Arctic Cat IFP shocks. That one rode really good. It did. I was actually impressed with, with how them, yeah. them shocks handled the bumps we were in today. Yep. Yep. You can, uh, you can bottom it out for sure, but it's got a very compliant ride and it does really good on side hills and deep snow. The AC5S shocks, uh, I would say that the number one setting, it's a five position clicker mm-hmm. on all four shocks. The number one setting is probably softer than the IFP shocks of the Alpha One. I agree. I bottomed that uh, one out just a, l- uh, a couple times. Uh, you know, I'm not a very big guy and never did bottom out the, uh, you know, the, the standard shock. So, yeah. Which, which is good because now you got five settings, you know, you get a. A uh, bigger guy like you on there, and and you can adjust up and and set it to where you want it. So yeah, so I had I had those AC5S shocks on the first position. I, I left them that way because I just came off of the Alpha One IFP shocks, got onto the Snow Pro with the AC5S shocks, left them in number one, mm-hmm. and it was actually a softer ride than the than the IFP. I, I kept bottoming out the rear end, so I just stopped, leaned the sled over. You got a, a big clicker on each one, turned them up to the number two position, kept going, and that bottoming out went away. So that's cool. The, the ride was, was really compliant there. Uh, so that's the Snow Pro, that's the green model that has those shocks. Uh, we did spend a little time on, uh, on a blue Mountain Cat that Dave McClure had. And this is the Mountain Cat that Dave McClure's had for the last couple of weeks. And it didn't have quite the same calibration as those other three that we were testing. So yeah. uh, we didn't really focus much time on that. That one felt closer to what we rode at Snowshoe. 
Yeah, and I never got a chance to ride that today, but um, that's what you're saying up there on the hill. She felt a little, little lacking. Yeah, and Alan was talking about that one, saying that the that it needs to that it they need to go through and, and update that to where the other three are. But yeah, so the the three three that we rode, you know, something that Shay probably didn't want us to talk about too much, but they pay a lot of attention to what's going on and, and what the competition is doing. And Arctic Cat, Arctic Cat's mountain engineers are really focused on weight. Yeah, uh, the catalyst is really light. It's pretty lightweight sled. We we weighed the uh, the catalyst M six hundred compared that to the other brands, the Polaris, the Skidoo. Uh -huh. Shay and Alan and these guys here have, have weighed stuff on their own, too. And they told us, uh, you know, they, they weighed the the Alpha 1, the black one. Yep. Alpha 1 with the IFP shocks against a 2024 Polaris 9R 155-275 track. But it had the 7S display. So their weights, and again, this is Arctic Cat weighing stuff. Their weights, uh, the 858 came in lighter. A little bit lighter than the than the 9R, um, which which was impressive. And, and honestly, the way we rode it today, it felt lighter. It did. It, it felt like a really lightweight sled. Uh, you know, I'm not going to say what numbers are. We'll do our own testing uh, with production stuff, you know, this later this year. But the, Shay did say that they are working on stuff, too, between now and production that might shave a few more pounds off of yeah, the 858. Yeah, which I thought was really cool. You know, and it, you know, you can get another 5 to 10 pounds off that thing. That'll be uh Yeah. Well, you get down to this better. weight. Yeah, you get down to this weight, and one pound is a higher percentage of the overall weight. Than, yeah, for sure. And if you're starting at a higher weight, so... Man, even a pound or two, five, six, seven, eight pounds, yeah, it'll it'll just make that sled better. Yep. Anything else specific on that? Um, I, you know, I think Brock talked about this um, in our one of our podcasts about the cockpit. You know, the the positioning of the rider on the sled. Um, I really paid attention to that because I I guess wanted to. And uh, you can ride this sled in the neutral position about ninety percent of that ride day. There was a few times you know you had to throw your leg over and really get around a tree or something but um just your foot placement on the running boards on this chassis you can ride in that neutral position and man it just it keeps you well you don't get as tired i felt like and it's just it's fun um, to stay in that neutral position and, and lean and you're pretty much telling it which way to go and uh you know so today was an arctic cat ride with cat engineers but uh we we did run into you know another snow s crew and i up there on the mountain and they had a they had one of our they had our 9r 155 325 so i took a second while we were stopping to talk and i jumped on our 9r 155 325 and mm -hmm. just did a quick rip in the meadow L really looking to feel because some of the heat that we were getting off of our previous podcasts were comparing it to the 9r right and and that's you know that, that that's a response to a lot of comments on social media not not from Anything Arctic Cat is saying, but that's a response to comments on social media that, that hey, this thing probably beat the 9R. And so I hopped on the 9R because we were comparing it to the 9R in the previous show. Uh -huh. Went around, and being honest here, I don't feel much of a difference between the two. Really? Throttle response, bottom end, mid-range, top end, that 858, I think now with this calibration, this latest cal, I... Honestly, if, if it stays like this for production, I'm happy. I'm impressed with, with Cat if it's this level at production. I assume it will get better. But right now, from what I felt, and, and, and granted, that's a quick little rip on, on the 9R, but right. I, got, I got a lot of time on it, as, as everybody knows. It. But it's, it's close to that. I, you know, we were saying a lot more like, well, this is more like the 850NA Polaris, mm -hmm. uh, a little softer on the bottom end. That's gone. This thing's got a bottom end. It's got throttle response. It's got mid-range. It's got top end. Like, it's impressive. Yeah. It, it pulls. Yep, and all that combined in that new chassis. And, you know, a lot of people want the twin rail, which which I don't – everybody likes something different. Um, but that chassis with that alpha rail just flat out works. And then you get the power out of the motor. I mean, it's it's a, it's going to be a fun sled for those that have uh, got one on order. Yeah, the alpha rail has a learning curve to it. Uh, it does. It's going to feel different than uh, than anything you're coming off of from a Skidoo or a Polaris. Yeah, it's going to take a while to get used to it. You probably will override it right off the bat. Yeah, for sure. Um, once you, like you were saying earlier, if you stay neutral on this sled um, and just really lift with your outside foot and push with your inside foot and kind of ride a staggered stance, move mm -hmm. your feet back a little bit, you can really control that sled with your feet more so than uh, upper body. I would, I would like to see, I'm an advocate for a twin rail from just... Uh, an industry standpoint, I think there are more people that would go venture out and try the Arctic Cat, try the 858. If it had a twin rail option, I think that would be a stepping stone in. And then, hey, I love this thing. How do I get better from here? Well, you go to the Alpha 1. I just think that there's a, a little bit of a mental block of people like, eh, I don't, I don't want to go spend $19,000 on something. I have no idea what it feels like. 
Yeah, for sure. You know, and they had their the first years out, they had that misuse of the alpha rail breaking. But I don't know. I, I haven't seen that lately yeah. um, on, on social media. So, yeah, it's like a specialty, such a specialty mountain snowmobile. It's a deep snow snowmobile. And yeah. then you got people doing quite a bit more aggressive riding. And you that that might also help Arctic Cat is let the guys who are breaking alpha rails, let them go have a twin rail. Because if they're yeah. going to ride that way and they're jumping off stuff and they're they're doing uh, wheelies everywhere they go and then jumping and landing on that rear axle and breaking rods in the track or yep. or something, give them a give them a twin rail that, that they can rail brace and do different stuff with. Yeah, you know, I agree. The Alpha One to me is a very specialized, you know, deep snow mountain sled, and yeah, if, if you if you take it out of its realm, it's it's going to might have some issues and you know you can say the same thing about uh the summit x you can say the same thing about the the pro rmk yeah you know these things are designed getting more and more focused on very specific niches of of mountain riding and if you take them out of that it's like polaris with their 325 track if you get a 325 track three and a quarter inch track and you do the majority of your riding is trail racing going 65 miles an hour down the road you're gonna have problems yeah yeah your track's gonna come apart you know, so you, you kind of got to stay w- within uh within the category on some of this stuff um so some of our conversation on the previous pod was about uh the steel external spider on the Articat clutch you know on there for durability i was i was kind of speculating that maybe that was some of the bottom end stuff that we were feeling uh-huh. you know it's it's over a pound of weight rotating mass added to that you know and that's that's to keep clutches together durability issues you know uh, polaris has had that issue too on its 9r they're they've gone back and forth on spider configurations and they're going to a forge spider for 2025 kind of dealing with the same issue i performance wise i'm no longer concerned about that you know I, I i went from disappointment after writing this on the first test session to complete 180 after today and i don't know overall impression though like this this a58 today after after riding this and, and working with the engineering team and you know kudos to cat for stepping up and calling us and uh bringing us in having a discussion you know we we sat there for a little bit before the ride and just had a kind of aired it out uh aired out any grievances and we called them out on a few things and questioned why you know the stuff we wrote earlier wasn't set up and uh-huh. they called us out on some stuff and I think we've got a good relationship with Cat, um, and you know, r- really quick, I do want to talk about you know, a lot of the backlash on the previous podcast was that the Snow West show is presented by Sno- by Polaris Snowmobiles. To that, you know, all I got to say is we Snow West has been around for 50 years. We sell advertising on uh, magazines, websites, YouTube, podcasts, all sorts of different platforms, and. Never once has it uh, really influenced anything that we have to say from a sled review standpoint. Right. If it did one time, I think we'd be out of business. Yeah, for sure. Um, but uh, really all that is is a, is a space where anybody can buy that ad and buy that uh, presenting sponsorship. Uh, that was offered to Arctic Cat. That was offered to Skidoo. Uh, Polaris took that one. But Arctic Cat is a, is a client, is a, is a sponsor of Snow West. You know, they, they sponsor Snow West on other platforms, but it's all the same thing. Uh, it is just kind of the way the world turns on that stuff. And Polaris is sponsoring this show right here. Yeah. Let's let's jump into kind of a, a final summary. Like what, what would you what would you say now? Like you you were actually going to spring order an eight fifty eight. Yeah. Then you wrote it on our first test session. And then you had second thoughts. Yep. Articat's spring orders go until uh, April eighth. What do you what are you thinking now? Um, I mean, I actually, I mean, I did spring order one before we even rode the thing because, you know, the hype was there. Um, social media was hyping it up, the next greatest thing. And coming off the 600 platform, you know, I'm like, I'll, I'll get one. I'm a, I'm a cat guy. Have I like Polaris and Skidoo ride them? Heck yeah, they're, they're great sleds. Every, every, every company's got their, their pros and cons. But, um, and then after riding, you know, a few weeks ago, I, I mean, I had second thoughts. I, I uh, was thinking about seeing if I could get rid of my my uh, order on that cat and kind of down in the mouth a little bit. After today, you know, I'm going to keep that order. Um, I mean, it all depends on how my farming goes, you know, whether I can afford it or not. But uh, <laughs> All right, money, no option, though. Money, like, no option. Like, money, no option. Money, no option. I mean, yeah, I, I'll park it in my, in my garage and, and go ride it and, and have a ball on it next year if, if they run like they did today. And, and honestly, the way these guys work up here and the way they're talking, I – I expect it even to run a little better next fall. I don't want to 
put that pressure on them, you know what I mean? Because if, like you said, if it runs like it did today, uh, people are going to be happy and excited for it. Yeah, so. and, and, you know, we, we, we can't test what they say is coming. Right. You know, anybody can say, yeah, it's just going to get better. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. Well, I can't factor that in on a review. For sure. I can only review what we rode. What we rode today, I will say, is uh, closer than 858. An, an M858 Alpha 1 is closer to a 9R than the 850 NAs. I agree. Totally agree. Like 100%. It's, it's, it's better than the 850 NAs from Skidoo and Polaris on power delivery and throttle response, and it's really close to the 9R. And, and, and I'm surprised I'm putting it in that category because uh, the 9R was kind of the, the benchmark and that high bar mm-hmm. for an NA sled. But this latest calibration is, is significantly different than what we rode. And having the opportunity to go jump on a 9R during the ride today yeah, this, that this, out good. this thing is right there. This thing is right there. And uh, so if it, if today's Cal is final and it goes to production, this is a good sled. And I got no problem. I got no problem uh, buying one of these, this being my primary weapon, and riding this thing all winter long. Yeah. It, it was a flipping riot today. It was a good time. I want to ask you, you know, we're, I'm going to go back to some of these questions we have in social media from the previous pod. Where do you think now, uh, you know, the... A, a premium 858, like a Mountain Cat, you know, comes in a little over 19,000 on a spring order, you know, 19 to 20. Where, where do you think that? What do you think about that price point? Is it is it high? Is it competitive? Um, I mean, it's it's competitive. I feel like they're all still high. All three, um, Players Cat and Skidoo. I feel like things are just outrageous. But that's today's world, I guess. Um, as far as price point, I I think they're in the game. Yeah, I, I think they're right there. It's unfortunate. The, yeah, like you said, they're all expensive. Uh, I think the cat took a big price jump uh, from where the where the M600 was last year to where the M858 is now. Yeah, it's a big jump. Uh, that's a big price increase. I think the advantage the Arctic Cat has going into it is they're going to be more limited. I think their their production capability is more limited mm-hmm. compared to Polaris and Skidoo. Yeah. So these are going to be a little more harder, a little harder to get if if they sell out. And so I think if they can come in and say, well, well, we're only building this many snowmobiles, we can charge more for them. Uh, I think that might be part of the game they're playing. It would be nice to see these things come in a little more uh, reasonable on pricing. Let's see. I'm just looking if there's any other. Oh, I did want to talk about running boards. So if, if you're configuring a, an M858, how, what are you building? Uh, aluminum running board. Uh, exactly. That's exactly 100%. what I was going to say. Yep. Stay away from the plastic running boards. They are slick. They collect snow. Yep. Uh, I've seen them break. Um, yeah, I've seen them break too. But they're inexpensive. You know, they're forty-seven bucks. But, yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh, get the aluminum running board. Do yourself a favor. They don't collect snow. They have way better traction. Uh, it's a lot. Uh, it's just a better setup. Um, are you going Alpha One? If you build one, what did you order? I guess you did order one. Yeah, I ordered the black and red one. So just the basic model, the shocks. I and I kind of went off price point. I guess um, you know you can save about four grand by doing that. And then if you want to upgrade your own shocks or whatever, you can do that also. But um, after riding that one today, I'm I'm happy what I did because of the shock package. I, I didn't mind it one bit. The IFPs out there, I, I didn't mind that one bit. I did non-electric start. So I'm excited for that sled to roll in and, and maybe halfway through the year or if I keep it a couple of years, maybe I'll upgrade the shock package. But um, the display, we haven't talked about display. Um, we did a little bit last time. I, I think Cat's got the, the best display on the market right now. It's it's crisp, clean. You can see everything. I am kind of bummed. about the G8? Yeah, the G8. Yep, sorry. Um, I am kind of bummed I didn't maybe have that, but I I know I feel like there's going to be a, an update you can do. You can actually, you know, buy the accessory yeah, I guess, I, to, to put that on your sled. So I think those are cool. Uh, honestly, if I'm if I'm buying a mountain sled, I, I guess I'm, I'm a diehard. I'm all about weight. Yeah. I don't want to pay money for something heavier. Um, I, I can see the advantage of having a, a cool gauge where you can track your buddies, but everybody's gauge is heavier. The 7S is heavier than their small gauge. The yeah. 10.25 Skidoo touchscreen is heavier than their small gauge. Uh, this G8 is heavier than their small gauge. If I'm ordering a sled, I'm getting the small gauge. You're on the small gauge? But that that's just me. I, I, yeah. don't, I don't use the gauge for buddy tracking. Yeah, and I don't. I'd just really. soon be lost. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. Uh, track length, what did you order? 154. Three inch. Three inch. Okay. Yep. And I actually didn't mind the two six today, but you know the two six is really sensitive to snow condition. If, yeah. If you've got a, if you if it hooks up, it's a good track. If it's deep, it's a trencher. In yeah. My opinion. I agree. 
I, I would order the same thing. I would get a 154 three inch. Yeah. I would I would probably get the black Alpha One. Mm-hmm. Uh, if I'm not getting the Alpha One, I, I would get the Snow Pro. Just for the shocks. I, I really like those. I do like those shocks now. Yeah. I've, I've come around on those AC5S shocks. I like those shocks. But, uh, man, the, the, the black Snow Pro with the IFP shocks, just a very compliant ride. Just did everything I wanted today. I was, you know, on that on the bottom single track that's all moguled out. I was... Um, yeah, you were cruising through there. I, you know, you try to cruise through there just to see what it does compared to other stuff. You know, mm-hmm. Polaris doesn't do that well, uh, those single track moguls. Uh, Skidoo... The 34-inch front end does it okay. The free ride is phenomenal. Yeah, I you agree. Know, free ride blitzes that stuff. Um, and the cat did pretty good. And, and for being the base model, the Alpha 1 with the IFP shocks handled that stuff pretty good. Yeah. The, the, I was on the uh, the AC5S shocks on the 46 on the way out. That did really well, too. And, you know, I've, I've said some stuff about the Alpha 1. I, 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 on the hard pack, if you're on a, on a single track or on hard pack snow, it's not the the best feeling in the world it's obviously something you can get used to if you buy a cat you're gonna it, it's not going to hinder you it's just a different feel um and in, when you get in that hard pack the back end just kind of uh moves around a little bit more yeah you know side to side but it's not it's not a detractor because it's such an advantage up in the deep stuff yeah i agree so i, I don't see a, a huge negative there it's just something that we talk about you know we we get into testing sleds and you know, I've I've tested sleds for well, my whole life, I guess, for uh, 25, 30 years. Been on every, I think I've been on every single mountain sled since there's been a mountain category. Wow, so, that's cool. So, you know, testing sleds is what we focus on. We, you know, it's easy for one guy to say, you know, my brand is the best brand, and but that's all that you ride. So, it's easy to say that. You know, and we're not out to uh, we're not out to identify one brand being better than the other. We're just out to ride a snowmobile and report on a snowmobile mm-hmm. what it does. You know, and I'm looking for ride quality. I'm looking for ride comfort. I'm looking for energy consumption. Like, does this snowmobile go where I'm trying to make this snowmobile go? Does it fight me? Do I fight it? Does it wear me out? Is it a battle? Is it fun? Is it a pain in the butt? Where where is it difficult? Uh, where is it good? That's that's what we really go into when we're when we're testing sleds, and so we we kind of we treat every snowmobile review that we do as just an independent test. We we test sleds. Yeah, and they've all got to be a little different, or else it'd be a boring. All right, uh, well we'll wrap up this show. I did want to keep it short. You know, I guess we could we could probably ramble on for another twenty minutes. Yeah, we could. Should we do that? <laughs> no, but uh, thanks for listening. Uh, go to snowwest.com. Check out our, our merchandise. We got t-shirts and hats and stuff that that helps us out a little bit. Subscribe to the magazine. We can we still do print issues. Uh, you can get digital issues. Go to the YouTube channel and hit subscribe. Listen to the podcast. Uh, find the Snow West show on your favorite podcast platform apple podcast google podcast spotify but thanks for listening we appreciate it and uh, we'll catch you next time peace out